Hello, my name is uh, Scott Larson. I am kind of local also. I grew up in uh, Sandy, Utah. I went to Utah State for undergrad, and then I went to the University of Utah where I got my MD, MPH degree. And uh, now I'm a pleasure to be here at McKady Hospital. Um, today's talk, I'm gonna talk about barriers to prenatal care here in Ogden, Utah. Um, first of all, I don't have any disclosures. I don't have anything. Um, <laughs> just a lot of debt. Um, the way we came up with this, uh, t this is, um, as Ashley, Dr. Kernan mentioned, we have areas of concentration during our residency, and um, what, my area of concentration was obstet obstetrics. Um, actually, Dr. Kernan and I uh, formed a clinical question together. Uh, b based on an observation of our prenatal uh, patients, we noticed that there were quite a few women that were presenting for their prenatal care starting in the second and third trimester. And we asked the question, first, who is most likely to present with this care and why are they presenting late? So we decided to do a, a survey. Um, but first to, to start, we wanna, I just wanna discuss the importance of prenatal care. First of all, the goals of prenatal care is to get an early, accurate estimate of gestational age. Um, we want to identify patients who are at risk and um, also evaluate the mother's and fetus's health during the course of the pregnancy and, um, and anticipate problems and try to intervene if these problems occur and also to educate our patients during these visits. Um, ironically, there is, a, there is a Cochrane system, systematic review that reviewed randomized trials in different countries uh, that showed that the number of prenatal care uh, visits did not actually correlate to, uh, in high income countries with improved outcomes. It only showed it in uh, low income countries. And so the question is whether, how many visits actually do women need to present? But we do know that women with other core morbidities such as diabetes and hypertension do need to have these comorbidities uh, treated in order to ensure better outcomes for their, their children. Um, so barriers to care, things that we noticed in our, uh, through other studies that usually low economic status, language, access to health care, and knowledge of when to come into the clinic, and also to know if they were pregnant. Kind of a dis, um, disclaimer on the slide, Yes, these women are trying to overcome their barriers to get their prenatal vitamins. I apologize, I didn't have any slides of pregnant women doing hurdles. So bringing this home what, uh, to, to Ogden, uh, f first of all, just to give a b little bit of background about Midtown uh, Community Health Center. The mission of Midtown is to provide safe and excellent health care to residents of northern Utah, especially those with economic, geographic, cultural, and language barriers. It's a diverse population. About 66% of the clinic population doesn't have any insurance. 59% are, are a racial uh, minority, and 34.8% of these patients are actually best served in another language. It's also the home of our resident obstetrics clinic. And the demographics of our, our, of our clinic, uh, the number of prenatal patients uh, back in 2011 was 895, with about two-thirds presenting in the, the first prenatal visit at the first trimester. Um, and we had about 7.79% of low and very low birth weight babies. Just to kind of give you perspective what that means compared to Utah. Um, uh, and, and actually the local area. Here, Midtown, uh, our, the per percentage of uh, people presenting at the first trimester, as I mentioned, was about 66%, which is, is decreased, uh, as, you meant, as you can see from the other regions uh, in the, the rest of our community, given that a lot of our patients from Midtown actually come from a lot of these, these areas also. Um, as a state in general, we are, close, uh, we are coming close to about 70%. Also, to give perspective our, of our outcomes of low birth weight babies, um, the Midtown is about 7.6%, um, which is close to Weber County which of, of 7%. 
The state of Utah is around 6.5%. So the object objective of our study was to first identify the demographic and attitudes that present uh, barriers to obtaining early prenatal care with the population served by our clinic. So what we did is we took uh, 100 randomly selected volunteer participants on different clinic days to, to complete the survey. Um, we got the demographic and known health history uh, was gathered by our medical assistants prior to this. The survey was then given in English and Spanish with uh, uh, medical assistants for, uh, that would help with those needing literacy or language interpretation. Um, and then also uh, the, the patients, we then stratified them uh, by the first, and first trimester and those who presented late in the second and third trimester. And then we stratified that information by age, race, parity, education, uh, behavior, and feelings about pregnancy. So this is our survey. First, it just shows that we had basic demographic information. Uh, and then we also asked health history information and if they were engaged in uh, tobacco, illegal drugs, or, or alcohol, and the education. And then we asked them a couple of questions, how they felt about prenatal care, if this was important to them. Um, and also, what were their feelings about their pregnancy? and then also try to dis discover reasons why they weren't coming in uh, until after second or third trimester. So this is the boring part, the statistical analysis. Um, we just did the chi-squared test comparing the medical history between the first and the late presentation, and then we did two sample t-tests to compare the percentage of the demographic identifiers, and then the two mean t-tests to compare their responses using a calculator, so. So these are our results. First of all, the demographics by age. Hopefully, uh, this, lady, this lady didn't present. I just wanna let you know that. Um, <laughs> neither did she, so that's a good thing also. Our, uh, but we did find a statistical difference between the number of teenage patients um, who were presenting for late prenatal care versus uh, those who were pre presented into the, by the first trimester. Also, as a, just to mention, as you can see, about 78% of our patients are Hispanic. Um, in, our, in our sample, which is also pretty indicative of our, the population of our clinic. But uh, there was no statistical difference between the two groups in our samples. And we also looked at where if parity had a, a factor, which we can also see um, did not. They were, they were pretty much the same population within the two groups. When we look at education level, we also see that pretty much education did not have a, a factor in it, in it all, at also. Which the interesting part, even women who were college or postgraduate college, about 11% of our uh, late presenters were, uh, were women who had, had completed higher levels of education. So the timing, the timing of when these women came in after looking at knowing that they were pregnant versus when they came in was also st statistically significant in the fact that the first trimester took them about three and a half weeks in order to, after they were pregnant, to get into to their visit. However, the late entry, um, it was, the average was 9.4 weeks. And interesting, just the health information. Uh, first of all, as you can see, that people, women with history of gestational diabetes were more likely to present in the late entry. Um, also, and we can see that women who, that there was a trend, this is not statistically significant as a, just because of the weakness of our study with the lower numbers. But we do start to see trends that women who viewed that they had a previous complication in their pregnancy actually presented earlier, um, along with uh, women who actually smoked came earlier versus those who didn't. Um, but another concerning fact is the fact that women who had known diabetes, 
Women who, know, who had known hypertension also were it's the same in the, in the two different populations instead of coming early. The, when we asked women if they, what they considered, if they considered prenatal care important, um, there also was st statistical difference in the fact that women, there were the late entry also did not feel as important. Um, emotions also, um, people who were happy were more likely to present in first trimester at trending, but, and people who were embarrassed were actually most likely to, to present early. And interesting also is that uh, people who were worried about, um, who came into the first trimester, they, were, they stated that the reason they came in the first trimester because they were worried about if they were going to keep the baby or if they wanted to give up for adoption or abortion. And uh, uh, the other was, the, among the women that were presenting late, few that, the problem was that few that answered the question, uh, they didn't say, stated that they didn't know they were pregnant. So weaknesses, we had low numbers of participants, and also some of our participants didn't uh, answer all the questions completely. So the discussion, the things that we learned from this, that the greater proportion of women who are age 15 to 19 presented late, and parity education level, race did not ma didn't matter, and uh, there was a greater proportion of gestational diabetes and other comorbidities that also showed um, uh, that didn't show, the other core morbidities did not show a statistical difference. So the results, the people that we need to, uh, kind of things that, that I learned is that the, the at-risk populations is who we need to start looking at and help them become more aware why they need to come to their prenatal appointments earlier. And, um, and also many women who had gestational diabetes the question is why aren't they coming in early if they had history of this in the past? And we should also reach out to the teenage mothers um, who also presented uh, in the late. So the next step was to, is to conduct uh, focus groups to find out why are these, the, what, what are the attitudes of the teenage mothers? What, how can we compare and help the women um, who are presenting late versus uh, early, and also look at the people who, the teenage moms who came in early, and as we didn't get good information, uh, to, to help encourage them through a different process besides surveys, uh, and help this become a discussion. And also, one thing I learned from my own practice is that as we talk about uh, problems of how, how to prevent pregnancies, some, with our high-risk populations, we ask, and we also talk to them our gestational diabetics about the, the concern for de developing uh, diabetes in the future. We also need to discuss that when they do become pregnant, that they do need to become, come in early so that we can make sure that these uh, comorbidities and other diseases are well controlled. So special thank you for my, uh, the MA, my wife who did all my data entry and for her bachelor's project and, and Ashley Kernan, thank you.